once it levels off, you just reach over here and flip on the main fuel circuit. The engine will then go on up to about 4,000 RPMs, 4,500. Once it stabilizes, you just turn off the idle circuit. If you have the idle circuit on, along with the main fuel line, it will not make RPMs. It goes back to the pilot circuit every time. So you got to make sure that you turn off that switch. Over on the bottom side, you'll see these two switches down there. Well, those two switches are for afterburner control motors. That's for your pumps. Once you're up and running, everything is stabilized, you like what's going on, just reach over there and flip those two buttons up. That arms the buttons, I mean, that arms the switches that turn the pumps in the ready position. You come over and you have a cyclic control stick. A cyclic control stick, let's see if I get your picture in here. You have a button right here. When you push this, that activates the solenoids and the motors to start the afterburner smoke rolling. When you hit the green button on top, that ignites the hot streak and lights the fuel. Simple operation. You have a standard foot feed down here with a toe return, and you also have a large non-slip brake pedal. Harness is six points. Uh, you can see that there's plenty of room in the seat. All the fuel points have control valves. Uh, the way we're set up now, you make sure that you have five switches turned on, five levers turned on. That makes sure that the driver's side tank goes to the engine, the passenger side tank goes to the afterburners. There is an additional pump on the back underneath everything. You can see it right down there. That is a booster pump for the afterburners. We just wanted to put a little more show in the go. So that's a 440 gallon per hour pump that goes directly back through the solenoid, through this number 12 line, into this spray bar, and dumps massive amounts of fuel into the afterburner. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see in here, but you'll see the flame holder is the first section we come to, and then you'll see the spray bars right behind that where they cross over. Going back a little further, I hope you can see that that round ring down there, that's what we call a lollipop. It's drilled with holes all around, so we have good dispersion, perfect flame holder. Everything is designed to allow for expansion. Going underneath, you can see the attachment point for the parachutes. Good and solid, slip point, half inch bolt with roller on the bolt as required by NRA and all sanctioned bodies. We have a pan, which is stainless steel, underneath the motor to make sure that we drop nothing on the track, runway, wherever we are. So any spillage goes into that holding tray. Rear axles. Big brakes, little puppy runs as straight as you can stand. The body is solid. Get a little closure on this door here. Now I'll show you down the body lines. Everything is very straight. Both sides. The paint on the driver's door has a little brighter yellow tint than the truck because we replaced the doors and uh, when they painted it, it didn't really match. 
but everything looks good. I'm gonna turn the camera over to one of my crew chiefs and I'm gonna give you some idea of my size because you're talking about you were six foot two, 250. All right, you and Nate. Yeah. Mountain will back up a little bit. I'm six foot one and a half. I weigh 300 pounds. Now, with the helmet on, fire suit, balacaba, boots, everything else, all you do is put your right leg in first. There's a swing handle in here. See that? Swing in, set down. I'm ready to make a pass. You'll fit in here like a glove. I've got 36 inch long arms, 24 inch shoulder. I'm a wide guy, and this thing is just as smooth to a drive as you can have a vehicle. If you like it, give me a call. Uh, you won't be disappointed. We also have a digital voltage gauge I forgot to remind you of down here on the dash. It does read volts of the batteries, and it will also swing down and read amperage that's being pulled. Uh, you got your exhaust temperatures, you got two exhaust temperatures uh, for the afterburners. This is your tachometer. We have lights up here that let you know what is being activated at what time. These are your after bur bump, after burner pump switches. Flip them up, two switches right here, these lights will come on, let you know it's on. You can hear that click? That's the afterburner solenoid coming on. This is the hot streak button. This is your starter button. With everything turned on, when you flip this switch up, your starter will start spinning over, and start coming up to speed. You leave it up and you leave it on till you're finished with the run. Just raise your foot. You can drive it back to the pits, whatever you want to do. In your shutdown mode, turn off these two switches. Turn off your main fuel, your fuel main fuel supply, your power. Turn off the uh, pump and the uh, starter. And you're down. We always clear the engine out after it's gotten hot if it has a little extra fuel in it you might get some smoking we just clear it out by bringing this back up turning on the starter and it'll clear right out that gives you a good overview you can see here is the parachutes you can go one parachute or both and uh, this is a actually a bargeman throttle control out of a uh, large boat works absolutely perfect. These go back. You're ready to run. When you push them off, and then you're, you're ready to come right back to your parachutes. Poof. And you're stopping. If you got any questions, give me a call. 803-442-9206 or 1-800- Nitrous, 648-7687. Also, the Southern National Boat event is on, the, is on July 15th. I think I told you the 17th. It is the 15th, which is a Friday night. Give me a call. Let me know what you think. Thank you, sir.